morning, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers to each and every one of you. I'm just going to have a little sip. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> Here we are. It's unlocked. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, in case there is any confusion, my name is Rob Locke. With an E. Yes, indeed. Rob Locke. <laughs> With an E. Uh, that was Ian Freeman, by the way, who sent that in. And details will come to you very shortly in the show if you want to be the featured with an E in future broadcasts. Coming up, Ollie London is here. Woo! Yes, he is. I can't believe we got him here. Thank you, Ollie, for coming. We can't wait to speak to you later. Also, ooh, I feel tingles in parts of my body that haven't felt anything for many, many years. What's going on in the building? Is it haunted? I don't know. But if we were to find out, there's a man who could tell us. And that is celebrity ghost hunter, Ray Jordan is here as well. Hey, round of applause, everybody. It's just me then. All right, thank you. <coughs> Continuing in the tradition of what I like to call lock and laid. In other words, trying to get me, uh, trying to find me a girlfriend. Laura Besbrod is here. She is celebrity matchmaker from Matchmaker UK. And if she can't find somebody who wants to shag me, I mean, go out with me, absolutely nobody can. Also tonight, we have a lady whose legs have won international awards, as has the rest of her. But most importantly, her mind is the mind that was used by Mensa when they were setting up the entrance rules. And her, her cunning and her savvy are so cunning and so savvy, there isn't even an adjective in the Oxford English Dictionary to describe them. It's the one and only Hannah Hudson, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, How was that for an intro, all right? I mean, that was incredible. If you could write my dating profile, I'd be fine. <laughs> Absolutely. I've done my own. It's, it, honestly, it's worked very well. I'm your man. I've actually had quite the dating history. I dated a schizophrenic, but had to leave her because she was seeing other people. One of my dates turned out to be a communist. Should have seen the red flags, really. I was with a much older woman for a while, but when I told her to act her age, she died. You know, losing a significant other can be hard. In some cases, impossible. I even dated a homeless woman. It wasn't great, but on the plus side, didn't matter where you dropped her off in the morning. And also here on the show, it's, of course, it's the irrepressible, the irretrievable, the irresponsible and the irrigatable the man with the most. It's Grant Bradley. Hello. What we like to do is start off our little show with a roundup. And because it's a roundup of the week, and my name is Rob, we cunningly called it Grant's Get Together. Hannah's hand up, or so, I don't know. Uh, no, it's Rob's roundup, obviously. And we've got some quads. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> Hannah's hand up. <laughs> she sees an elderly lady trying to cross the street or get up some steps. She's she's struggling. She's having difficulty. And Hannah helps her up. That's <laughs> Hannah's hand up. It was dinner with a difference in the Cooper household this week after Dad of Three, Nigel, made an exciting edible discovery. Yes. He'd flipped over a rump steak when he noticed a familiar outline. From Aldi, 4 99 he's really pushing the boat out there, a steak that bore a striking resemblance, so he reckoned, to Great Britain. What do we think? I mean, yeah, OK, we can give him that. Well, to me, it looks more like somebody's taken Mickey Mouse and smushed their face on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it is remarkably like a steak. It is a bit steak-like, isn't it? I mean, it is four ninety nine from Aldi, so I don't know what? how close to a steak. How is, empty but... are these people's lives? Look at the photograph I've just taken of this steak. It kind of, sort of looks a little bit like Britain mm. if you squint. How's it going with the rest of the sort of career? Any any interesting auditions recently? Uh, or? Yes, actually. I mean, it wasn't um, it wasn't a, a theatrical gig. You know, I'm I'm resting at the moment while I do this show, obviously. Uh, but it's fun. It's uh, it's ironic, even you could say, because speaking of anusol, I actually had. Um, an audition for a commercial for Anisol, which is why I've got this, because I, I got to keep it cheap for free. Um, do you want to see it? The advert or the audition? <laughs> the, <laughs> the audition. Oh, okay, yeah. The audition. I, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah, yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see why you might Here it is. Why you might Here's me it. acting up. 
We understand that hemorrhoids or piles might not be a subject you feel comfortable talking about, but there's no need to suffer in silence. Anusol is here to help. That's great, but the client wants to try some different accents. Can you do that? Uh, sure. Anything in particular? Mm, just try a few things out. OK. Uh, should I do the same script? Yeah, but feel free to play around. You got it. Is your arschloch burning? Sorry, not that. It's a bit soon. Oh, OK. Um... Anusol goes in back door, then make problem disappear. Just like me. Yeah, let's try to keep it light. Oh, uh, understood. Problems with your bum plum? Well, don't use whiskey, it'll sting. Use Anusol instead. Anusol, it's like the mob. It takes care of assholes. No. Huh. A renal cauliflower was growing in your dirt patch. Nope. Itchy barnacles on your puckered starfish? Definitely not. Got it. Hemorrhoids are like BMWs. Eventually every arsehole gets one. That's why you need Anusol. This week's question is, are you ready for this? Drum roll please, ladies and gentlemen. Who would be your worst person to be stuck in an elevator with? Grant Bradley. <sighs> That's a tricky one. I mean, hang on, I'm saying Grump. <laughs> that was my answer. No, I'm just kidding. Rob. I'd love to be stuck in an elevator with you. Vicky said, uh, I saw in the comments there, she said, oh, uh, uh, Boris Johnson probably, be, uh, you know. I, actually, I'm very good in elevators. I, I have lots of ideas. Sometimes I get in them, sometimes I get out of them, sometimes I go up, sometimes I go down. Um, and I'm absolutely resolute about the floor that I will be taking that elevator to. Paula, she says, evening. Daniel granted, of course, Mr. Rob Locke. Uh, Valentine's is fast approaching. How will you be spending it, Rob? Well, like all, I spend every Valentine's Day alone. <laughs> hey, Rob. Have you got time for me to nag you for some advice? I really like this girl at work. She's perfection personified. Literally, if you had to picture the perfect human being, she would be it. She's funny. She's intelligent, and she's terrific. But I'm just not quite sure how to broach the subject with her for fear of that dreaded rejection that you and I are both used to. I went out and about on our very, very first kooky tour. And we are visiting the British Lawn Mower Museum. And do you know what? It's a good thing that they closed this place down just for us today because otherwise they'd be lining up around the block. Ah, now this room is very, very special because it contains lawnmowers of the rich and famous, including royalty. Have a look at this. This was donated by Prince Charles and Princess Diana. And fun fact, at the palace, they had a nickname for this lawnmower. Yeah, they called it the Town Hall because everyone loved to ride it and fill its box. Now, of course, lawnmower technology isn't all seeded in the past. No, no, no. Look at this here. This is the Husqvarna solar robot built by Electrolux in Sweden. It's what they called back in the day cutting hedge technology. Now, this case contains some gardening trinkets that were donated by some of the cream of British entertainment and Timmy Mallet. Um, we've got a dibber that was donated by Lee Mack, the great comedian, and a pair of secateurs by the nation's favourite, Vanessa Feltz. My special guest tonight is an extremely accomplished American actor and a familiar face on countless TV shows such as Freaks and Geeks, The King of Queens, Mom and Christella. Also feature films such as Raising Arizona, Drop Dead Gorgeous, L.A. Story, and Adam's Family Values. He was also Chandler Bing's boss on Friends. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Sam McMurray. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. How are you, my old son? On paper, it's kind of yeah. like, wow, that's a bit extreme. I mean, you know, I love ABBA, but you know what I mean? You so you've made, a... like ABBA, right? <laughs> yeah. you've made a very specific choice, but I, I think it really shows that you are completely committed and dedicated to that, aren't you? Because it's not mm. like you're putting on a wig or something and you can just take it off again. I mean, this is pretty permanent, You know, right? people always say I'm wearing a wig. Like, I had a comment today. I posted a picture of my new hair colour and people like, yeah. take that wig off. I'm like, it's not actually a wig. I've only worn a wig once, by the way, on TV. But yeah, yeah so yeah. I do. I do a lot of kind of crazy things. I've had a lot of surgery and stuff, six nose jobs. 
even Korean nipple surgery last year. So I did. Korean? What's Korean nipple surgery? Well, you know, I was on this morning and Philip Schofield said, well, how can your nipples be Korean? I was like, yeah, actually, they're not. Right. So I was like, okay, let me go have some surgery. So I had the surgery after Philip said that. And, you know. What, sorry, what's the difference between a Korean nipple and, a, and a, you know, an English they're nipple? They're just Korean shaped. So I showed the doctor right. a picture of Korean nipples and I was I like, I need these nipples like yeah. down to the T. So, you know, I've got the Korean nipples. Let's talk about the the other side of, of the ghost hunting phenomenon, shall we? Okay. Which is, there's a very, it's a, there's a special term for this. Uh, it's called bollocks. So oh. when you do these shows, they are utter <coughs> bollocks, aren't they, surely? Um, let's just say a lot of the shows are for entertainment purposes. Do not put yourself out there until you are ready. And ready is when you are able to take rejection. You know, and right. are we ever ready for a rejection? You've got to... <laughs> I um, do it professionally. Is it a whip? It is a whip! Hey! Hey! Who oh, got Rachel, that? Rachel Morgs got that. Rachel Morgs! She's getting a Toblerone. Can you, and say, actually, go on. Clues, not helpful. Right, not helpful frothing at, at the all. mouth, like whipped. Get you whipped up. Yeah. Take politics very seriously. The chief whip, right? Um, um, sometimes people um, like to horse around with me. You use uh, a whip, right? Yeah. You know, creamy whipped cream. Okay. Oh, I could get used to this. <laughs> oh, oh, I say. Maybe the whole SM lifestyle is for me after all. I've really got to get rid of this Christmas weight, mate. It's the end of February, mate. Exactly. I've put on so much bloody weight, and I, I don't know, I just can't seem to get back into slimming mode. Well, actually, I heard about this new slimming technique recently. You don't have to count points, you don't have to count calories, and apparently it works with every type of food. Really? Yeah, it's, it's meant to be 100% effective. Do you want to give it a go? Yeah, sure. Okay, so turn and face me, and take a big bite of your burger. Okay. Mm. Oh! <laughs> what the f I'm really sorry, mate. Oh, Jesus. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, just carry on eating. I'm really sorry. Have another bite. Well, there's no way I'm going to f***ing eat it now. See? 100% effective. <sighs> How can I send you a video for your with an E section of the show? Good question. Well, all you have to do is record. Now, here are the instructions. If you don't follow them, we shall send people around to your house and whip you. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask nicely. <laughs> Maybe that could be a giveaway. <laughs> I like vlogging. <laughs> Rachel Morgan. Is that Mark's? Is that, that wouldn't happen to be floor manager Mark's missus, would it? Yeah, someone married him. Um, <laughs> 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 just kidding, mate. Why do you want to speak Russian? Do you want to speak Russian? I speak Russian now. In every book, there is the first thing in the last seven past things. Unlocked his broadcast from here, on-air media, in this state-of-the-art industrial complex in Warrington, England. A mere gunshot away from Manchester, Liverpool and Wigan. And trains. Let's have a look around. Down here, we have Hannah Hodson's dressing room. Now, we're recording this at around about five in the evening, so Hannah should be almost halfway through getting ready. Let's have a listen, shall we? Probably best to move on. Uh, oh, oh, this is the voiceover booth where... We do voiceovers like this. Come this way. Now this, this is the nerve centre of Unlocked. It's the control room, or gallery, as it's otherwise known. Whatever comes out of the studio is filtered through here and made a little bit less shit. Thank you to everybody who's watched. I hope we've brought a little cheer, uh, a little enjoyment into your life. I hope that, that you've managed to laugh in some pretty weird times. I mean, it, it's unprecedented what we as, as a nation and we as a world have been through. And the, one of the reasons we did this show is because you can't laugh. What the f is the point?